Welcome to What Gear Reviews for an old fashioned camera compare and contrast video between the iPhone 13 Pro Max and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now, one of the big differences, although there doesn't appear to be that many, is the difference in camera sensors. So now in the 14 Pro Max, we do have a 48 megapixel primary shooter. But right now, what you're looking at is the selfie camera on the two smartphones. And also, you might notice a difference in sound quality. And if you do, let me know in the comments below. And to be honest with you, I don't know if Apple did change the selfie camera or not. So let me know if you see any differences in the comments. And now, let's check out some photos. Okay, here's picture one, and let's get the ugly mug shot out of the way first. And this is me trying to practice my YouTuber face, and I'm so bad at it. And that's why I don't often appear in the thumbnails. But anyway, on the right, you can see I'm pulling a face like a bee has just landed on your face. And I'm like, let me just swat that for you. And then on the left is a face that kind of says, yeah, this looks pretty good. And it does, especially if you look at the high dynamic range in this photo. So if you look at the clouds in the sky, you'll see the white is clipping a lot on the iPhone 13 Pro Max image. On the 14, it's handling it much better. What's really interesting here is it's probably not down to the image sensor itself. It actually could be down to the new improved ISP, the image signal processing delivered by the new chip in the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And overall, I feel the skin tones are much more natural on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So there's definitely been a marked improvement here. So I've done loads of these camera comparisons over the years. And honestly speaking, the iPhone 13 Pro Max is probably the best macro camera that I've ever seen on a smartphone. So I took this photo to see if there's been an improvement in this area as well. And I do believe there has been. There is the possibility that the sun kind of shifted a little bit in between me taking these two photos. So that might be why there's slightly darker shadows here on the iPhone 14 Pro Max photo. But what we're really focusing on is the actual image quality itself. And if we zoom in, you'll notice actually there is more detail being delivered by the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And that's not to say the 13 isn't very, very good, but it is clear to me that again, there has been a marked improvement on the iPhone 14 Pro Max when it comes to the macro camera. So, so far, the upgrades are noticeable. So, so far we've looked at the selfie camera and also at the macro, which is technically the ultra wide. Here is the telephoto cameras, and this was taken from quite far away. And what we can see here is actually there is a slight improvement, but we have to zoom in to really see it. So check this out. When I took the first photo, these ponies were just kind of eating, and then all three of them turned around and started staring at me which got me a little bit worried, but check this out. Have a look behind the pony. You'll notice that there's actually more detail being picked up by the iPhone 14 Pro Max in terms of details in the bushes. I think in terms of the actual subject of the photo, which is the animal there at the center, the details are pretty much on par, but I think it's the light sensitivity that's been improved here. And again, this could be down to the new and improved a16 Bionic, or it could even be an improvement in the actual lens technology inside the cameras and the lens coatings. There's various variables that could improve camera quality, but one thing's for sure, it's definitely been improved in the telephoto. Okay, picture number four, and this is taken with the brand new 48 megapixel sensor here on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It's actually been more than half a decade since we've seen a megapixel jump up from Apple. They've stuck with the 12 megapixels, but don't get it twisted. It's not always about the megapixel count. It's actually more to do with the image sensor size and the image sensor quality, and also the quality of the optics. And like I said before, there's loads of variables, but the fact that now Apple are using this brand new 48 megapixel main camera with advanced quad pixel technology, which basically means there's pixel binning down into the 12 megapixels anyway, but nevertheless, it's still a big, big upgrade. So I took this one in quite a bright lighting condition and what I'm really looking at here is how much detail it's actually capturing on these petals and whether it's handling those colorful areas of this plant better than the previous version of the iPhone. So let's zoom in on this orchid and have a look. So if you look at the color gradation and the saturation there of the colors, you'll notice on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, we've actually got more depth in the colors and even in the brighter areas of the photo, where things are starting to get a bit washed out on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, it's retaining that information. And you can actually see the textures a bit clearer as well on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So, so far, it's been an upgrade right across the board when it comes to the iPhone 14 versus the 13. So here's a portrait shot on the rear cameras. And actually, this was a very difficult one to do because the iPhone 14 Pro Max actually 
punches in quite far in order to deliver the blurry background effect that you see here. On the iPhone 13 Pro Max, I had to move much closer to this figurine in order to get the same or close to the same image, but you'll notice the dimensions are different and that's because of the different optics and the different calibration of those optics in front of the image sensors. I think you'll agree with me when I say the iPhone 14 Pro Max image is far crisper, sharper around the figure. Everything just looks better in my opinion, but the iPhone 13 Pro Max is also very good. The only criticism I have is the actual figurine of Chun-Li from Street Fighter. It looks a bit softer, particularly when we look at the face of the character. And I apologize that I didn't take a portrait of a real person, but I make these videos on my own, so I didn't have anyone to take a photo of me. And plus, you don't need to see my ugly mug again. We got that out of the way at the beginning. So right now, I think you'll agree when I say we've seen improvements in pretty much all areas that we've looked at so far when it comes to the 14 Pro Max. But I honestly think the biggest jump we're gonna see when it comes to image quality and the difference between these two phones is when it comes to night shots. And that's what we're gonna do. But before we get to that, there's three things. Number one, please subscribe. Number two, we're gonna look at the zoom capabilities on these phones. And number three, we're gonna look at some video quality back to back, and then we'll get onto the night shots. So stick around for that. Okay, so here's night shot one, and this isn't an incredibly dark photo. There's quite a lot of neon lights and colors going on here. And at first glance, you might think these look almost exactly the same, but actually, if we zoom into the details on the right-hand side of the photo, you'll notice that larger image sensor with the pixel bidding tech is picking up more information in the darker areas of the photo. But this isn't a game-changing difference. Now, let's check out the second one. So I did clean the lenses on both the phones before I took the photo, before anybody says I should clean the lenses. I did do it. And I think in this photo, you see a marked improvement again, definitely in the overall brightness of the image. If you look at the steps where my shoes are, there's far more detail on my trainers and on the concrete there in the foreground. And even when you look at my face as well, it's retaining the skin tones more accurately. It's just a better picture overall, in my opinion. And I do think there's a difference in the tone of the photo when it comes to warmth and coolness. And what I mean by that is if you look at the iPhone 13 Pro Max photo, you'll notice there's a kind of blue tint in the sky. And then on the iPhone 14 photo, the sky is actually much closer to black. And the way that it is doing it is more intelligent. So maybe it's actually selected the sky and just added the adjustments to myself. Who knows? It's all AI. Only the machines know what they're thinking. Anyway, check this next one out. So this is the ultra wide camera. And again, this is what I'm talking about when it comes to AI. So the megapixel count on both these is still 12 and the improved AI is making the iPhone 14 picture look much better. And there's me just sitting on the step wondering, what the hell am I doing out here in the middle of the night in the freezing cold with a t-shirt on, on my own with two iPhones and a tripod? Well, the answer to that is I'm making this video for you guys. So if you appreciate that, thumbs up and a subscribe would make my day and might actually encourage me to go out on another night and take some more photos for more camera comparisons. So anyway, I do believe, again, this is a win for the iPhone 14 Pro Max. 
Now this photo, I will admit, is a very challenging photo to take and I've taken this with a few other brands and all phones seem to struggle with this particular lighting condition in the middle of the night next to this red street light. But I think you'll agree with me again when I say the iPhone 14 appears to have improved since last year's model. On the iPhone 13 Pro Max, my face kind of looks very blotchy and smoothed out. It's not the greatest picture in the world. And the iPhone 14 Pro Max looks a bit more grainy, but it's certainly more detailed and generally speaking, a better image overall. And don't judge the selfies at night on this photo. This is a very extreme case type of photo. I'd never recommend someone to take a selfie in this lighting condition, but hey, that's what I've got to do, right? I've got to put it through the extreme test to see how it handles against other phones in the future. And this is kind of like a benchmark that I do with most phones that I test on the channel. So these next two photos I want to leave for you guys to critique. So let me know in the comments below which one looks better here. I call this one the toxic wildflowers. I'll give you one observation that I noticed and that's the color balance is different between the two. But let me know what you think about this one. And then this is an extreme night HDR shot. I made this one to try and help you guys get your mind right when it comes to choosing between the 13 Pro Max and the 14 Pro Max. And apart from the photo quality, something you should definitely take into consideration is the difference in price right now. Because up until this point, I would definitely say the iPhone 13 Pro Max was top three when it comes to smartphone photography. And it's just been leveled up now. <laughs> And before you go, I just want to say, I'm not the type of guy or type of reviewer who always thinks they're right. I just offer my opinions and I'm definitely interested in hearing what you have to say. So make sure you leave a comment. If you disagree with anything or agree, let me know in the comments below. And let me know what you thought of this video. If you enjoyed it, thumbs up would be appreciated. And if you just subscribed, you're now one of the finest subscribers known to man. And I will see you in the next one. So don't be late.